Giallo is the name given to a cinema movement born in Italy in the 60s. Credited as the predecessor of American slasher films, Gialli were a fusion of crime, thriller, horror, and sometimes erotic films, with a lot of gore and explicit violence. The origin of the term, that means literally yellow, comes from the cheap pulp paper used to print Italian crime books, often printed with yellow covers. Gialli movies didn't have such a very clear and specific stylistic unity, having different aspects being highlighted by different film critics. Classifying a movie as a giallo becomes a very difficult task, much more complex than the quote-unquote simple Hollywood classification. So, even if some critics consider a film as being a giallo, other critics might argue against that idea just by simple details in the form and themes presented in such films. Nonetheless, some directors have become famous in the genre. Silvio Amadio Umberto Lenzi Luciano Ercoli Mario Bava and perhaps one of the most famous of them all, Dario Argento. Some of his most famous jolly movies are Deep Red, Phenomena, and Tenebri. But Argento's true masterpiece isn't even considered a giallo. Suspiria is a horror classic. It's a unique experience for the viewers. Argento's use of extreme mannerism made Suspiria one of the most important horror movies ever made. So it was natural that when a remake directed by Luca Guadagnino was announced, some people got very apprehensive. English-speaking countries have a long tradition of creating shitty remakes, especially with originally foreign movies, like Old Boy, for instance. So it was natural that some people expected the worst. Sure, Guadagnino's Italian, but the risk of the remake being a disaster still existed. Suspiria is more than a movie. Suspiria is an audiovisual experience. And I know I sound like a douchebag talking like this, but really, there's no better way to describe this masterpiece. Argento's not trying to tell you a story, or at least not in the most traditional way, but he uses the basic shape of a story to deliver the surreal expressionist visuals and hypnotic music by prog rock band Goblin. Argento is not trying to limit himself by logical structures and forms. It's not logical to have colorful lights completely overtaking a scene, but so what? By the end of the 70s, the classic formula of making movies was completely worn off, exhausted. And so the use of mannerism in cinema gained a lot of traction and attention. Mario Bava, still in the 70s, started doing this. And Argento quickly started to use mannerism in his movies as well. And Suspira is the apex of it in Argento's filmography. Again, the story of a witch coven that works inside of a dance academy is just the empty canvas to which Argento applies his colors. It's just the face to which he'll apply the makeup. And he doesn't want a classic, smooth and simple makeup. No, he wants a full-on drag queen, with exaggerated characteristics to convey his vision. Tom Waits once said, I like beautiful melodies telling me terrible things, and Suspiria is the visual representation of this. A beautiful melody, or in this case, a beautiful imagery, telling a terrible story. The extraordinary and mesmerizing scenarios and use of color and camera movements are just a facade to a much, much darker universe. The music composed by Goblin also contributes to set this trap that catch the viewer unprepared, with a delicate dreamy opening that slowly grows into something much more obscure and discomfort, and once you realize what it has become, it's already too late. As Tom York, composer of the score of the 2018 remake, said, What I found interesting was they used repetition, repetition of motifs again and again and again and again and again, where part of your mind is saying, Please, please, I don't want to hear this anymore, please, <laughs> please. And that was really great because that's a form of, uh, uh, that sort of hooked me into the whole process because it was. Um, there's a way of repeating in music which, which can hypnotize. Then we get to 2018, and Suspiria is released. 
a remake directed by Luca Guadagnino, Italian director who had previously gained a lot of notoriety for Call Me By Your Name. As I said before, a lot of people were expecting a disaster, including myself. I even took a lot of time until I finally watched the movie, and I was really surprised. To be fair, Guadagnino itself didn't refer to the movie as a remake, but rather as a homage to the original 1977 movie. Like Argento, Guadagnino didn't saw the beauty of the movie in the story, that's just a skeleton covered by the audiovisual experience, and serves just as a basic structure to build the sensorial experience upon. But different than the original movie, Guadagnino's version is much more introspective, more formal and classic in some aspects. The movie has in 70s aesthetic, and at various points reminded me of The Shining. We can trace a parallel between the Overlook Hotel and the Academy, ample and austere spaces, confusing architecture, hard to map in our minds, and the way the ambient seems to have a supernatural control over people. Guaranino is not trying to emulate or recreate the same experience he had while watching the original Suspiria. He's actually trying to create a new experience. He doesn't want to be faithful to the original story or mise en scène, but he's doing his own version of it, using the same premise to put a different makeup on it. His remake is not trying to approximate a new public to the story, he is just trying to give a new experience, both for audiences who have never heard of the original film and to old fans of Argento's masterpiece. But there are still some moments in the film where the director makes more obvious references to the Italian original. Especially during the fifth act, he declines a more down-earth style and creates a more intense, mannerist style with red filters over the image, making it look more like a Dario Argento's movie. About the story, Guadagnino is way less interested in giving you a meaning behind the whole film. He doesn't bother to explain that much what the witches are, why they're doing what they're doing, and leaves us with a more dubious ending, while Argento gives us the dialogue with the psychiatrist in a more straightforward ending, without much space left for interpretation. Both films are articulated in a very unique and interesting way, and the remake doesn't try to be a remake, but creates its own stylistic vision, not tying itself to the original, but exploring the freedom to make different choices to proportionate a different experience for the viewers, exactly like every remake should be. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to this channel. In the description you'll find my Twitter, Letterbox and Instagram. Consider following me there as well. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys next week.